So hello everyone and welcome to the special interview that I have with Christy Kate. Christy, how are we doing today? We're doing wonderful. How are you? Oh, I'm doing just dandy. You know, I was just having a wonderful lunch with my brother. We had some amazing dim sum and now we're going to have an amazing interview. I'm so, so excited because, you know, it's it's interesting, uh, you know, with the with your resume of the characters that you've done. You, you've done characters such as Elliot from Charles of Mana, Amori from Chocobo Mystery Dungeon, and so many other wonderful characters. So... You know, Christy, it's clear that you have a quite the range of voice acting characters such as Elliot from Charles of Mana, a zombie girl named Chi Chi from Genshin, and the unknown god from the same game. When did you discover your voice and voiceover? I discovered it uh, as a child in imitating characters for different shows and movies. I loved watch, uh, playing video games, so I would play like Super Mario 64 and I would imitate Princess Peach or... Uh, different get video games like that and then I didn't realize I had a passion for acting until later on in life uh, ironically I did a podcast in high school and mm -hmm. it I did not feel like I did a good job with it because it was my parents friends they were like hey your daughter she likes acting let's let's throw her on this podcast and I was like what and so I I don't know I felt like my voice sounded cringe and I just wasn't a fan uh, mm -hmm. but a few years after that I was doing background work on some movies and that's when I discovered that I actually really liked doing voiceover because I had a conversation with another background actor and they were taking voice classes and I started doing the same and it was just it was so perfect, and I loved it, and that's kind of how I got there today. And here we are. You're doing these different voices of characters and everything, <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of interesting, too, just because I can kind of relate to the, you know, starting off with the with the voiceover of doing podcasting. You know, there was, uh, I, I'm not sure if you remember, uh, in the early 2000s, the beginning pioneer of podcasting in 2006 era to 2007, there was a website called Blog Talk Radio, and that's kind of where... I got my start in kind of discovering my voice and the voiceover doing podcasting and everything. So I find that kind of interesting that we have to kind of that same roots, the same start. And podcasting now has just grown so massive lately. Like, you know, just even for... You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah, it is. Like, for example, like yesterday, there was, I, was, I just saw a podcast of, I didn't do a podcast. <laughs> you know, different things like that. And like, even a podcast right now, I'm like, I'm doing redoing my balcony. And like, they're like, add a flower pot to the right side of the balcony because of wind reasons. I'm like that, shaking my head in the car, like, yes, wind reasons. Thank you, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's incredible to see how we can find and discover our own voice. And, and that being said, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a saying that goes in acting. It says, get to know your character or become that character. Out of the characters you voice, which one can you identify the most with? I'd say there isn't really a singular character I identify the most with. Uh, there's realistically, like, facets of each character is something that I relate to. Like, uh, both Chi-Chi and Elliot have, like, that childlike wonder. Uh, Chi-Chi is forgetful, and admittedly, I can be at times. Uh, and you even have Irma from Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon. She loves jewels, and I mean, who doesn't love diamonds? Like, well, you know. I like the I like the fake shiny ones, to be honest. Like those giant fake ones. I'm like I'm like I'm totally into that. <laughs> you have, you gotta get what they say. Get the bling, you know. Just diamonds are forever. You know, just like the song goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's talk a bit about Genshin. So how did you hear about the edition for the game, and what was your reaction to it? The audition was interesting because you don't know it's for Genshin. Everything kind of has like a hidden uh, name. Right. Uh, so you just kind of get the character breakdown, look at it, and audition. And it's a blessing and a curse because on the one hand, you're able to just kind of do the audition without thinking in the back of your head, oh, wow, this is for blah, blah, blah. I'd love to be in that. But it's also a curse because knowing the genre and the tone is super helpful Thankfully, the Genshin auditions were very clear with what they wanted, and they provided vocal refs from the original Chinese actress, which was what this uh, dub was based off. Of. Right, and 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 it's and it's so unique when you get these kind of experiences because you're you're kind of in that loop where you're like, oh man, I, you know, I wonder how this is going to be, or like, wonder how this game's going to turn out, and it, and it's and it's and for you specifically, you know, it's really unique when actors get to voice multiple characters in a game. So in, in Genshin, you voice the unknown god and Chi-Chi, two completely different characters, unless chi is some sort of god that we don't know about. But <laughs> what can you tell us about the unknown god? Um, 
I, I, honestly, I know just about as much as you do based off of that trailer. I will say that when the trailer came out, I was super excited to hear myself in that trailer. There's only like 200,000 views at that point, and it was a wonderful experience. Ironically, when the game came out, I wanted to, you know, hear the opening cutscene, and I had downloaded it on my phone, but I didn't realize my phone was on silent because I don't really game on my phone. And I was playing the cutscene, and I'm like, wait, but I can't hear anything. No. And yeah, it just, it just, uh, I, I had to watch oh, it man. later. <laughs> Cause you can't, you can't reach. Once you pick a twin, that's your twin. Like, <laughs> like, that's it. Once you pick the one, that's it. And wh which twin did you go for? Did you go for Lumine or Ether? Okay, so the funny thing is, is I know Sarah Miller Cruz in real life, and I did not know Zach Aguilar prior to recording Genshin. I picked Ether because I felt at, uh, before the game's release that there was more female characters in the game. So I was like, oh, okay, well, let's just like mix this up and like have you know, the male traveler, and then over time they've released so many other characters, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess that didn't really matter, but, and I, for, a, for a minute mm -hmm. I felt sad that I didn't pick my friend, uh, Sarah, but uh, with the latest, you know, release that happened, I won't say spoilers, it was cool because I got to hear uh, Sarah act more, and it made me happy. So I was like, okay, I think I did do the right choice. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, it, it's definitely a wonderful experience when you get to do all these different characters. And, you know, um, and especially with Genshin, you know, there's other actors that get that unique experience to play multiple characters. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Laura Stahl plays Shin Yen and Barbara, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, so things like that. So it's all a very, very unique experience for the actors, and I can only imagine playing... Uh, two iconic characters is awesome. So playing what the gamers believe is a villain to the sweet forgetful Chi-Chi can be a bit of a challenge. Where did you get the inspiration for Chi-Chi? With Chi-Chi, it was honestly just listening to the original Chinese actress's interpretation uh, and just reading the audition and seeing like what they were describing they wanted for the character. I know I gave them two takes for my audition. I gave them one that I felt like very closely resembled the original Chinese actress, uh, and then another take that was more emotional because I wanted to show them I, that Chi Chi could get really sad if she wanted to over forgetting about something. Uh, so I don't know if that's why I booked Chi Chi or not, but yeah, it was, it was a fun experience. Mm. And, and I can definitely can say that a lot of fans definitely appreciate it too, just because Genshin Impact has become a global phenomenon and the fans have been very, very active, especially with the fan art, the cosplay, it, you know, it, it's amazing. Even when I uh, recently did an event for Spectrum Impact, you know, being able to work with the community in MiHoYo has been an amazing experience. So what has it been like for you? So what is it like to interact with the fans? I've had such wonderful, positive experiences with fans, and even before it was announced that I was the voice of Chi Chi, I know that the game had released, and I remember seeing a tweet with somebody mentioning how much the character Chi Chi meant to them because they have short term memory loss. And to them, it was such great representation mm. being able to see a character like themselves in the game. And I've also had a few other wonderful fans on like TikTok tell me how much Chi Chi means to them because they don't ever want to be forgotten. And it's just been so wonderful, like dealing with so many kind individuals and I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And I just mm -hmm. hope that I can keep bringing light and joy to people as well. Absolutely. And, and, it, and it just those characters, because there's so many different characters that people can relate to into the game. It, it, it's wonderful what MiHoYo has developed into such an in, incredible game. And for those who are listening, we just want to say, you know, we appreciate you. We love you guys. Keep up with all the amazing fan art, the cosplay, the the testimonies. It, it really does touch our hearts that we get to see this and, and be part of such an amazing experience such as Genshin Impact. So coming up, we got our speed round. Some very fun questions to ask because, you know what? We like fun questions. Who doesn't like fun questions? So starting with the first <laughs> one. So on Twitter... On your Twitter profile, it states that you're part of the BTS army. I personally don't know much about K-pop, so how would you convince someone like me to convert to K-pop? I, I just love uh, choreography, the music videos. There's so much that goes into K-pop in general. 
Uh, and BTS is just, in my opinion, on a whole nother level because all their music videos are kind of connecting. Like, they have, like, this thorough, like, storyline that kind of, you know, you'll watch a music video like Film Out was just released and then you're like, wait a second, that looks like it's mirroring fake love. <laughs> there are other music video and it's like there's all these lore and theories that kind of go into it, which is very much artistry. The messages behind so many of their songs are really inspiring. It's all about loving yourself uh, and how important that is. And my favorite song is not one that people would know. It's called C. It was a hidden track on one of their Love Yourself albums. And it's basically about you feel like you're in the desert and your goal is to reach the sea. But they were basically describing that after all that time and they finally got to the sea, it just was also like a desert to them. I, I'm I, I'm butchering the meaning. It's beautiful if you look up the lyrics. Um, it's super <laughs> deep and I just love it. <laughs> also, I got to see them live uh, in 2014 at a group K-pop concert. Because again, I just, I love K-pop. Um, but I remember thinking to myself back then, I was like, wow. These guys are super talented. Like, they can sing, they can dance. I'm like, they just need a hit song, and they are going to be number one. And then look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward, and they're, they've taken over with the BTS army. Yeah. They've definitely taken over. Yeah, and and, this, and the one thing you've got me definitely that's that's definitely convinced me is 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 deep lyrics. I'm a big fan of, like, the deep lyrics and what they, the meaning behind it because... You you know when someone is singing a song and they put their heart and soul into the lyrics into their into the meaning behind it when they every vocal that they sing so you know what that's definitely got me convinced to take a look into the BTS army and not only that but I you know I have a couple friends that show me like they're like hey check out this music video and and, and I got to give credit you know K-pop's got an amazing production team with how they run their music videos the choreography um, you know the timing of sequences and everything is just absolutely outstanding and of course just the the, the amount of fashion is just awesome in general. They, they, I, I got to admit, K-pop oh, yeah. has some of the best fashion I've seen probably like ever. And so definitely those definitely those who are listening, got to check out some of the K-pop. One song that I know we, uh, we were kind of discussing is, uh, what is it from? Shine, Shiny? Uh, Shine? Is how you pronounce it? Shiny. Yeah, them. And, and they just, their, their song Ring Ding Ding just, I can listen to that song over and over again and be like, yeah. Ding, 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 dong, you ding, know, ding, just, just kind of just bop my head. And if I'm feeling down, I'm like, ding. <laughs> it's one of those songs where you're like, yeah, you know what? It's a bad day. Not anymore. So yeah, those definitely guys check out some BTS. I'm going to check them out and we'll probably talk about it in the comments below. Make sure you guys take a look at BTS army. Yeah. And, uh, to, to shiny real quick, Taemin, like he is one of the best dancers in K-pop. Like you guys, if you look up his dancing solo videos it's insane like there's so much technicality into that and people that are professional dancers which i am not highly praise him <laughs> uh, so it's super cool so we're definitely going to check out the bts army but what are some other genres of music you listen to uh, i listen to pretty much anything uh except country uh yeah i agree same thing same here you know i can get with a little edm a little hip-hop you know, a little bit of uh, a little bit of acid jazz, kind of like if you ever played Persona, like that kind of style of, you know, flux of uh, jazz music is always kind of fun. So I can I can agree with that one. Yeah, I like I like jazz that isn't smooth jazz. Like if it sounds like it should belong in like a department store, I'm not a huge fan. But if it's like live on the street, I love awesome. it. Yeah, same here. So what is something some people might not know about you? Uh, I think not a lot of people know that I can too be forgetful at times. Uh, a few years ago, like in middle school, I had to do like this presentation on stage and I don't know why I didn't really rehearse it much. Uh, <laughs> and instead I just went up on the stage and was supposed to perform like this 30s second monologue and I blanked. I literally got deer in the headlights. I just remember seeing those lights from the back of the stage just staring at me and I was standing there and I'm like, I, I can't remember a single thing. And there was a person feeding me the lines and even that wasn't jogging my memory. 
Uh, so, yeah, lesson learned from that was, okay, I need more than a day to memorize lines if it's going to be something, you know, lengthy. <laughs> uh, and it's just the right, kind of right, thing, though, right. where everything takes practice and everyone makes mistakes and that's okay absolutely especially with life theater it's very very hard even some of the greatest professionals uh they flub a line they make mistakes but you know what they always say the show must go on so for those young actors out there looking to get started don't ever feel down if you make a mistake you forget something a prop breaks on you just keep it going the show must go on <laughs> it keeps rolling <laughs> So the next question that we have for you is, if Chi-Chi was a zombie in a horror movie, which one would she be in? I don't really watch a lot of horror because I get scared really easily. Uh, fun fact, I saw War of the Worlds a few years ago, and it was the remake one, and I couldn't move my neck afterwards. That's how tense I got. And that movie was far from scary. Uh, oh, wow. So... I do feel like maybe because Chi Chi's a child, Chi Chi would be like in The Shining, I guess, because there's those two twins in that. But I, I don't think Chi Chi yep. is like mm -hmm. those characters at all. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think if Chi Chi was going to be in a horror movie, at least for my pick, would be Shaun of the Dead. Just, I don't know. It, it, you know, Edgar Wright's an amazing director, and he's got really good comedy. I think Chi Chi going after Shaun. And then kind of stopping and being like, what was I supposed to do again? And then just kind of walking away. I can imagine Sean being like, like what, what's going on here? Like, wait a minute. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. <laughs> Young child zombie, come come attack me. <laughs> Chi-Chi really is comedic, for sure. I love that about Chi-Chi. <laughs> yeah, I think Chi-Chi in a horror movie had to, has to be comedic. I would say Shaun of the Dead. Done deal. Nice. So, time for the plug-in. Where can people find your work or contact you for future projects? Uh, I can be found at ChristyKate.com or preferably uh, at ChristyKateVO on either Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. Uh, and I recently joined Twitch, same moniker at ChristyKateVO. I have not started doing anything there, so wish me luck. <laughs> you got this. You got this. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of fun. Streaming is I wish I could. I, I wish I could stream Genshin. I love playing it. I'm AR uh, 55, but uh, I play it all on mobile, and I have a Mac, so it's it's the struggle is uh, <laughs> there for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm mobile as well. I I completely understand. Yeah. 100. percent Oh, is there any last words or special shout outs you want to do? Go, go, go. Go find it. <laughs> no, but really, I wanted to just say thank you so much to everybody that's been listening. I've had such wonderful experiences with so many people, and it just means so much to me that Chi Chi means so much to you. And I love all the fan art and the comics, and I love even just playing random matches with people. Like, I, I did some Rodelia, Rodelia's Rage with uh, some people whom I don't know, and... It was fun. I, I don't know if I knew what I was doing yet when I joined, and I apologize. Uh, but yeah, it's just been a fun experience being a part of this community, and I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So first off, a big thank you to everyone that is listening to the interview. A huge shout out to MiHoYo and to all the community members from Genshin. You guys are amazing. And in terms of Mora, I have no Mora because you guys are making me go broke with all your wonderful fan art and merch. Oh, you guys are amazing. And thank you guys so much truly from all of us you guys are amazing keep it up and of course a big thank you to chrissy for doing this interview with me you know this was such a wonderful and lovely experience getting to chat with you getting to know about the behind the scenes about genshin and how it's like to voice chi chi and of course guys make sure you check out christy and make sure you like and subscribe for more interviews and more to come and again thank you and may your journey bring you prosperity we'll see you next time